Dear friend, let's discover more of who we are together. Love, Haley and Amanda. Today we have a NASA, NASA audio engineer as our guest. I can't believe it. I don't know how we got this person. I do. Because he he's, has been our audio yeah. engineer here at Fernware. He's coming on the other side of the camera today. I can't believe it. We get to interview our very own Will, Will Flato of it's Germania. He's from Texas. We're going to hear about yeah, all this. Yeah, we'll tell in you everything. Second. Okay, before we jump in, though, let's do our pledge. Let's do our pledge. Because if we don't, we'll no forget. one will care. Amanda! <laughs> I'm kidding. I will. I'll also, we're thinking about making some merch here soon. And I think if it you should don't ha- know, be like d- bedazzled butt jeans yeah, that, that say, say live purdy. Yeah. Or, or like just a, a bandana that has, you know, s- stones on it that says it's so funny how bad this sounds but how it's exactly what i was hoping for too (laughs) really yeah because i can promise you no one will buy that i think there's a market i think the market i think the not the the people people that are listening (laughs) nor yeah okay so let's do the pledge i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united mates in america and rarely in public is where we stand one friendship under God, God. indivisible, live purdy, and just us, and Will, for all, for all. Yeah, we have Will Flato today. So before we bring in Will Flato, he's going to slide into our DMs. He's going to slide into into our our dear friend, dear friend, yes, couch. So before we bring him on to let him talk about himself, we're going to talk about him behind his back. Um, Right in front of him. But he's staring at us, so... (laughs) Let me just tell you, we, for the first year and a half of our podcast, recorded and we were the audio engineers of our podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm sorry for the earlier episodes. They're terrible sounding because we were learning along the way. And we- got to start somewhere. I'm proud of us. I'm so proud of us. But- we're not audio engineers. And so whenever we signed with Fernware Studio and we met Will Flato and he became our audio engineer, we were a little bit intimidated to record our podcast in a room with somebody else. Especially, yeah, because we play off of each other and get lost in our own world so much that we were like, who is going to be able to be in this room and not make us feel weird? Well, and it, I know that we publish these episodes and they go out into the world and many people listen to them but when we're recording them for that whole year and a half it had just been us in a room and so inviting someone into that space as we record was a little bit intimidating and a little bit scary and so I remember the first episode we did at Ferner which was um why be generous I think so yep I remember kind of feeling like okay there's someone else in the room they're watching us but it was Will and he would give us like these reassuring nods and be really interested in what we were saying. We were like, this dude's listening. I know. And he would be so encouraging and nice. Like after every episode, he would comment on what we had talked about. He made (laughs) us feel so good about what we had talked about. Honestly, it's way better than when we did it alone. It is. Because it's nice to have the encouragement. And so he just was a very special addition to the podcast. But- Guess what? He's leaving us for a new job. But for NASA. (laughs) So it's okay. Yeah, we're trying to be flexible with him. We're trying to be supportive, friends. But it's exciting for him. And we we really, really enjoyed working with him. So we thought before he, you know, leaves us, we have to have him on the podcast. And we have to let y'all get to know him because he really is an incredible person. And we want you guys to know who he is. And just we want to learn even more about him than we already do. And his journey and where he came from and how he went from, you know, engineer and music to going to NASA. Let's just let's hear about all of it. Okay. Will Flato, will you slide into our dear friend podcast? (laughs) Slide into our DF. Howdy. Hey, you. Oh, gosh. This is what Will looks like, everyone. This is what I look like when I'm clean cut. He cut his hair for yeah. NASA. No, for, for this, this interview. For this yeah. interview. I, for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So first off, before we get into the episode with you, about mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. what did you think about us when you first met Amanda. us? Oh. That is terrifying. I'm so scared. No, I liked the energy y'all brought. So a lot of times it takes, <laughs> there's like a, a a period of time when you meet somebody new that you have to kind of break this ice, break That's this right. barrier before you can really kind of start being yourself. And that barrier just doesn't exist with you guys because you're oh. just so confidently yourselves that it's like, oh, I, I can also my be eyes. myself because well, there, there is no. Stop. It's too sweet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will <laughs> well, cry. I hope you get yeah. fired. From NASA and come, and come back. back. Yeah, well, I don't, but thank you. Okay, that that's a really nice thing to say. But I yeah. have to say, you made us feel like we could be ourselves too, right off well, the that's bat. Nice. Maybe it's the mm. combo of but all of us. Yeah. Well, because just... you have to think like you never know. There, there are people out there who would be like, "Oh, it's just a girls' podcast." <laughs> oh no, these <laughs> idiot. Okay, well, I'll make you money doing this, and you know what I mean. And yeah, you yeah. just can you, you girls it? pause and go outside for a minute. For smoke. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you made us feel like you were genuinely interested and excited. Yeah, I was. You have interesting topics and That's points nice. of view on I life. I hope you like this one. I, I mean, yeah, we'll see. I think <laughs> I'm gonna, it's going to be weird editing this one. I know. So. It's weird to look at yourself <laughs> <Yeah>. and listen <laughs> to yourself. Yeah. Now you know how we feel. Yeah. Well, you don't edit. Well, you used, you used to. to. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah. and I don't think I was a very good editor because I would just cringe listening to mm, myself. That's mm. what I mean. That's you need hard. a third it's party. Happen. Yeah. Okay. Maybe so, Trusco can edit this one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think he could. Yeah, because Trusco. Good luck, Trusco. He's here. He's doing the editing and mm-hmm. uh, engineering today. And yeah. He's an incredible musician. He's doing a good job. We're gonna give him a chance. Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay, so we want to know more about you because we know things about you, but we want to dig in a little bit. Sure. So we were thinking, you know, how'd you get to be such a good person? Also, like, where'd you go to kindergarten? Yeah. Start uh, day one. What? Day one, kindergarten. It was someplace, had rainbow in the name. Mm, that sounds that was, like that was a kindergarten pre-K. place. That was pre-K. Yeah. Uh, kindergarten. My kindergarten teacher was Miss, Miss Mayberger. I remember because the name was so weird. Wow. Mayberger. Yeah. That's quite a name. That's one of the May only Burger. teachers that I, I can remember. I barely know her. <laughs> My fourth grade teacher's name was Miss Bitchy. What? B-I-T-C-H-E. But <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And my dad was like, this so has to shit. be a joke. <laughs> and I was like, it's not. Anyway. I guess wow. they could not hire someone because of their last name. That would be She like, kept saying, it's Bichay. Bichay? Yeah, but no one could say that in fourth grade. Wow. So okay. it was bitchy. Anyways. Man, that must have been tough for her with all the kids. <laughs> okay, Mayberger. Okay. Yeah, um, that's day one. We can just fast forward. Yeah, let's get to. So Where were you born? San Antonio. Ooh, Okay. Yeah. And, and how long did you live there? Till I was 10. And then my mom uh, got a scholarship to go study at A&M. Ooh, nice. And so For psychology. Psychology. Psychology, yeah. So uh, we moved to College Station. My dad was an appraiser, though, so he wanted to keep his job in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. So he ended up getting an apartment in San Antonio, and he would just drive back and forth to College Station in San Antonio so he could be with us, but also still work as an appraiser in San Antonio. Nice. And my mom was studying at AM. I was going to, I guess this was like fourth grade when I got there. So fourth grade through seventh grade, college station. Really fun childhood there. It's like Ooh. a small town. I just ride my bike everywhere, just be outside all the time. Love it. And then uh, once she got her PhD at AM, we moved back to. Love her. Um, Love her. Yeah, she's amazing. Her Love. story, well, I, you should have her on the podcast because she's okay. crazy. I was well. just about yeah. to say, what was it like growing up with a mom? who was a psychologist. Yeah, I get that question a lot. It was, she knows a lot about what you're thinking before you're thinking it. She Uh-oh. just like, it's like, she she gets it. So, it's, But you're, it you're very tough. close to your parents. Yeah. You have oh, good- we've had our ups and downs, but at True. this stage of, of our life, yes, very close. That's great. I love my parents. That's awesome. Um, So we moved to, we were going to go back to San Antonio after College Station, but ended up moving north of San Antonio in this little town called Spring Branch. Found a really cool house out there. It's like hill country, just mm, nice open space. Beautiful. And um, so moved there, went to a regular middle school. And then once I got to the high school, it was super country, which I like. I mean, I like the country and everything, but they didn't really focus on arts too much. And it seemed like a really 
closed circle because I was never in band in the middle school there, mm -hmm. but I was taking private drum lessons. Oh. And I wanted to be in the band in high school. And I was just waiting until I got into high school and to join the band there. But then they were like, sorry, you weren't in band in middle school, so you oh. can't join the band now. And I'm like, but I, let what? me audition. Like, I'm, I'm a good drummer. I take private lessons. Like, I, I know my stuff. They just didn't let me in. Ugh, what? I know, it was terrible. They, it's like was one of those places. Band? Teacher named Mr. Bitchy? Maybe so. <laughs> it could have been related, yeah. It's your husband. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't like that place very no. much. Um, I had some good friends there, and I still have uh, contact with some of those guys. But I've the school itself. I've got paused on you. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you started liking music at some point. Oh, yeah. I took piano lessons, I think, when I was really young. I want to say three years old, but I don't know if that's Whoa. accurate. I was a little, really little kid. Yeah. yeah. It was a, nice. almost like a daycare slash piano thing. I would go to this lady's house and she would let me play with blocks and then teach me piano. Was this because your parents are very music driven too and they wanted you to be? No, 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 no. I'm then the why'd, only... they, why'd they get you into music so young? Um, apparently I was like ordained by a priest. He said like he kind of gave this word over my life that I was oh going to be goodness. involved in music. And... Okay. That's a big story. Let's <laughs> hold on. Rewind. I don't know that story. I've been told that story. And, okay. Like, so cause it, yeah. did you grow up Catholic? No. Uh, oh, okay. C Christian, like non- uh, Non-dom? Yeah, non-dom. Yeah, non okay. Non-dom So Christian. this yeah. this priest, this pastor, when you were a child, kind of spoke over you that you would be in the field yeah. of music? In some capacity. Yeah. Holy smokes. Do you feel and like so, that's what drove you or you feel like he was just correct? I think about that a lot. Yeah. I think mm. he was correct. And yeah. I don't know, but it's also been like something that's always in my head. So it's mm. it's a weird thing to think about. It's yeah. like the know? chicken or the egg. A little it's like both. a self fulfilling, self -fulfilling, fulfilling prophecy type thing. But also mm. I've always had the inclination to like, hear music. I can play I could always play by ear as a kid like I would just get on the piano and be able to like you know play songs that I've heard back not yeah. perfectly but like hit melodies and yeah so I don't know I've always been musically inclined I, I think I would have been even whether he said that or right. not so um but sometimes parents need a little in the pants to be like okay it's okay for me to yeah. let my kid pursue something like True. this or you know just yeah. a little encouragement because I, I know my parents being an artist they were like that is so cute and sweet mm -hmm. and I was like I want to do it as a profession and they were like That's what dangerous. about <laughs> being a nurse also or something you know yeah, my but, parents never really tried to push me out of that they always let me it. pursue cool. it um and so yeah, I've always been interested in music and would take lessons here and there, but I really got into drums when I was like in seventh grade. What sparked the drums specifically? Um, my granddad's neighbor was selling a drum set. And so my, he was on the phone with my dad and my mom was in the car at that time. And my dad was like, she knew he, he was talking to my granddad and he was just saying something like, I don't know if we can do that. Like seems kind of expensive and my mom was just hearing that side of the conversation she's oh. like oh it's fine like give him the money it's cool like do it just do it he's like didn't oh, even okay. know what it was <laughs> yeah he's like oh, okay yeah i guess we'll, we'll take it and then he hung he hangs up and she's like so what was that about he's like, we just bought william a drum set she's like what and so we got the drum set and uh then i was like well we, i guess we need to give him lessons my parents said yeah i guess we need to give him lessons and so got really into it that's mm. awesome so back to the high school thing couldn't get in the band and there was this magnet arts high school in San Antonio that was, they were losing money. They were about to close down. And so they were like putting ads out for students to come join. You had to like pay a little tuition to get in there. But it was a really hmm. high level music school. Yeah. And so we we're Thank like, Thank God for those schools. Yeah. Seriously. Like, let's audition. Let's just give it a shot. I was uh, in my sophomore year of high school. So I auditioned. I was able to go which was about a 45 minute drive every day because I lived wow. out in the country. So I'd have to drive like almost an hour every day to go to high school. Good wow. parents again. Yeah, I was driving by that time. Oh, okay, so they were yeah, just like, yeah, it. you do it yourself. But yeah. Um, so I started going there. So last years of high school, really intense music mm. training and everything. We, we would do these like huge Broadway style plays with the live orchestra. So I would play percussion in the orchestra and be in the pit. We'd have like a conductor Whoa. watching the play and then like having us... Go along with the Amazing. with the actors. It was awesome, and people would get 
coached by Broadway in New York at our plays. Like they were that level, like Whoa, really, wow. really cool. What a so, cool experience at such a young age. Yeah, for real. It was really cool. And so from there, the college that I went to. Can I ask one thing before yes. we go to college? Yep, yep, yep. What music was influencing you in high school? What was the stuff you were listening to? Oh. Mm, was it a question. broad range of different Dubstep. stuff? <laughs> I was really into like electronic music. Yeah. That's also when I discovered Ableton Live. So okay. I would just sit on my computer. Do you know what Ableton Live is? I don't. It's like a it's music software, basically. You can make I know it because of my and, husband. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Um, it's kind of so, like Garage Band. But it's like yeah. loop, how people can loop. Like when they do like a live version of it too, like you can loop yeah, different it's like things you're playing. GarageBand and like programs like this are really tailored to recording microphones and like live music. Ableton lends itself to more like making it on the computer where you can like write in these mm. melody lines and drum beats and everything. And it's really good for making electronic music because it's all just like. So you were making know. your own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Where when I should have been taking notes, I had my laptop out in class, and I would just be like headphones in and, and making beats and doing stuff like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wasn't that great of a student. You were but. super saturated in music. Yeah, at such a young age, that's that's interesting. Constantly, well, it's almost yeah. like you couldn't get into that the band program in high school, and then it was like we're about to give you more than you even hoped yeah. for. Yeah, kind of the thank last God they didn't let you in that program, and you found oh, the other my gosh. school. Yeah, I think about that a lot too. Because I would have just man. been stuck there. Yeah, it would have been. It, it's so many things in life Ugh. like that where you want you try to do something you want, you get shut down, but then that opens up this opportunity of something you could have never imagined for yourself. Hundred percent. That happens so in everybody's life yeah. at mm -hmm. some point if you allow it and you're yeah. open to it. I feel like that yeah. guy selling that drum set, just a random old thing, but yeah. perfect for you. And then yeah. it turns out. If my mom had known else. that they were talking about drum sets, she'd have been like, no, that's not for us. So Oof. that's so cool. <laughs> so you go to where do you go to college? Santa Fe University of Art and Design. Whoa. Which is Santa Fe, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. my goodness. I love New Mexico. Yeah, it's, it was beautiful. Did you love living there? I loved living there. It was really, really cool. I would try to take all morning classes when I could so that I could go up to the mountain and snowboard for the rest of the day. Oh, my goodness. Like, it was a good life. Why did you pick that school specifically? Um, they had a presentation at our high school. They came to visit, and it's like it was kind of inspiring. So I already kind of liked them because of that. Um, I was accepted at Berkeley College of Music with no scholarship. Are and you? It's ex insanely expensive. So I was like, yes, oh. accepted, but... Not, yeah. yeah, probably can't Congrats, do that. Congrats, though. Thank you. Uh, that's a and big then, accomplishment, honestly, to thanks. be accepted. Yeah. Um, so it was there, Texas Tech in the music program, or this place in Santa Fe that was beautiful, and mm. I had a scholarship and Come got on. to be in the mountains, and yeah. So I was like, okay, obvious choice. Let's go there. Jeez. And very relaxed, relaxed school. I mean. I didn't even have any like core classes. It was basically just music classes. I had one English class, oh. never took a math class. I took one math class and it was called Math for Professionals. <laughs> nice. and I, I don't really remember learning anything. Because you just had your there. headphones on making beats. <laughs> that was high school me. I know. He grew up in college. He was more responsible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was a professional. He was in Math for Professionals, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was all just different. Like my history classes were all revolving around music and it was a really fun time i learned a wow. lot there but it was super relaxed and, and your degree was focused in music i guess yeah it was um i had a bachelor's in contemporary music it just kind of encompasses a lot of so things. in your thought process whenever you were selecting all of this what was mm -hmm. your vision for the future like what would, oh, I, did you want to do with that degree what did you want to yeah. do with music that's the part that always really teed my parents off because I didn't have a vision. I was just like, yeah. I, I like doing things with this much foresight because Ooh. I know that I'm enjoying myself and I'm just going to like, I can make decisions and kind of move on the fly, which is why I like jazz music so much because you're just mm. kind of improvising and you get to like see who you're playing with and make eye contact and just decide Whoa. together from that point, what's the next step. That's a really beautiful and it scary is. way to live to a yeah. lot of people who like control mm -hmm. of their futures. Yeah. But also that you just made a theory of life out of a theory of music is kind of yeah. Yeah. It's all, nice. It's all connected. But yeah, throughout my college career, my parents were like, what are you going to do after this? Like, college is really short. You're It's only four years. You have to have a plan on what you're doing next. And I'm just like, I don't have one. 
and that would those conversations would get really heated and yeah. very emotional. But uh, I bet, yeah, because I mean they're worried about your parents. Me. Yeah, yeah all parents yeah. want your kid, their kids to be okay in the world, and you want to, you, you know, if you can't control something and know mm-hmm. what's going to happen, that's scary. Right. But that's actually probably the best way to approach life. Well, at least to be open. No, I'm saying to be open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set that intention out, but then not control every step of what it looks like and how sure. to get there. But yeah. you knew you wanted to be involved and you cared yeah, about music. Yeah, that was that was my like. I want to be in audio or music or whatever. Like that's the world I want to be in. Mm. But I felt, I guess, I felt this kind of subconsciously because I know I didn't have these literal thoughts, but I think I had the feeling like if I have a specific goal, I'm going to be turning down a lot of other opportunities That's that right. could also turn into something yeah. Ooh, else. And you so, thought about preach. that as a young person? I mean, I know I had those feelings and it's hard to say like, You're yes, wise. I was like thinking about this literally, but I, I know that I have those feelings. Like I like being open and being able to pick different routes as I'm going. And I get very hyper-focused on things. That's just my personality. Yeah. So if I was like, I want to be this, I probably would try my hardest to do that. And I just yeah. didn't want to put all the energy into doing something when I don't know what the world has to offer yet. Oh I don't my know goodness. all these things that are out there. Ooh, I knew so, we loved you. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really plan too much. I just knew like So you'd say you yeah. aren't a type A personality. Yeah, I don't even know what the types are. <laughs> See? Type A is very controlling. Yeah, and, yeah I don't you think wanna, I'm type A. I don't think you're type A. It's yeah. funny though, we one of our favorite books, which I'm surprised we haven't brought in here yet, is called mm. A Simpler Way. Mm. And one of the quotes in there that we love says, our plans are like nothing compared to what the world so willingly offers us. Mm. And it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's exactly what you're saying. I mean, yeah, the whole mm. book is about being open to play instead of being focused on plans. Yes, that is 100% my life right there. Yeah. So then you don't have a plan and you graduate. Yeah. Yeah, what happens after you graduate college? I moved back in with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did too, okay. They were like, we said to make a plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's totally fine. I mean, like my it is mom fine. is Mexican and in Mexican culture, it's like you basically live with your parents until you get married. It's like, it wasn't a weird thing for us at all. And it, it, She it wanted was, her baby boy back anyways. Absolutely, yeah. Are I've you an gone. only child? No, I have a sister. Uh, younger? She, she's older by okay. like three years. Okay. Yeah. Um, so move back over there and I start trying to find a job as a audio engineer. I guess, yeah. So back in college, I started as a drum major, like focusing on drums, but about halfway through, I really liked the studio side. Hmm. Oh, um, okay. I took a studio class of like, it had like 10 students. It was really small. And my professor would just get jazz artists or jazz bands from Santa Fe. And our classes would be recording these jazz musicians. And so they would get like a little cool. record for themselves to take home. That's cool. And we would get the experience of working as a That's team amazing. and recording. So after that class, it was like, yeah, that, I really like that. Because you don't get like the performance type pressure and anxiety yeah. like of being in a studio having to do that. You do, it still is like kind of a, a stressful job, but you're more behind the scenes. And I kind of liked that aspect. So once I graduated, I had the idea that, okay, I don't think I want to be like a professional performance musician, but I'd like to be a musician in this capacity doing more yeah. audio engineering. Um, so I would, this was like a tip from my dad. He read this book called What Color Is Your Parachute? And it's- I've heard of that book. Yeah, it was oh really my good. Goodness. So he bought that for me when I graduated. And in that book, it has all these tips on like how your resume should look and how you should approach uh, getting a job and pursuing your career. And the only part of the book that I remember is like maybe on the third page. Mm-hmm. And it says like building your network is super important. And the way that you can do that uh, naturally, like in this world of the internet where everybody just tries to email and stuff, just find somebody that is doing what you want to do, what you think, mm. the, what job you think you might like, find that person's email or whatever and invite that person to lunch. And don't treat it like a job interview. Just tell that person, hey, let me buy your lunch. And let's, can I ask you some questions about what you do? That way, it's really hard for people to turn down free food. So it's like <laughs> you get that person out. You start, you know, you make eye contact with that person. You you start developing a network. They know your face. They know your name. They know that you are engaging and can mm-hmm. like be uh, confident enough to invite people out. Yeah. And you do that with 
as many people as you can in your area that are doing what you do so that that way they all eventually know you and you start putting yourself in that world, mm. in that city. Mm. And I was like, that is really cool. And I stopped reading the book right there. So, <laughs> so I started that doing that. That is brilliant. You're like, this is the color of my parachute. That is the color. Goodbye. So yeah. you started doing that. Mm -hmm. You start. Were you in Dallas at that point? Still in San Antonio, in okay. like north of San Antonio in that area. So it's kind of in between Austin and San Antonio. Spring so, Branch? Spring Branch. So the people that you w that were doing the things you wanted, were they audio engineers? Mm -hmm. Okay, D just different studios? Yeah, and I was still in the, like, the music studio mentality. So I was just looking at music studios. And pretty much everybody was too busy to have lunch. And so that <laughs> didn't really work. I thought you were going to be like, <laughs> and I met all these incredible people at all these lunches. Yeah. I ate lunch by myself a bunch. Yeah. I love um, that we went in depth about the book and that it didn't work. We'll come Don't back to buy it. the book. We'll I'm come kidding. back to it. We'll come back to it. This um, is an anti ad pretty for much the book. Everyone was too busy to have lunch. Yeah, it was. It, like, it felt like that at first. Um, mm. And then my dad had discovered this studio. I don't even know how he found it, honestly, through a work yeah. colleague of his. But he was like, this studio, they don't do music. They do more advertisement or something. Like, you should look at their website. And so I find their website. I find the the CEO, and I invite him to lunch, and then he was just like, just come in for an interview. So I was like, okay, that that worked, I guess. <laughs> and we're talking about what my experience is, and um, I don't know how to use Pro Tools at this point. I've taken classes on Pro Tools in college, but I never really used Pro Tools, but I was super good at Ableton Live. And so upon hearing this, he was like, well, okay, that means you know what to do you know how to record things yeah. you know how to edit but you just don't know how to do it in pro tools so i'm gonna pay you i think it was like 750 a month to just come in at nine and we'll put you in this empty studio and just work in pro tools to all learn day. it just he learn just it, paid you to learn it basically yeah that's incredible wow. and they would give me commercials that they've done in the past that's and they're so just like nice. recreate this make it sound as good as it does now but like totally yourself yeah and just do that. So I did that for maybe two months. Maybe, I don't know how long it was, maybe two months until I was really confident I could edit really fast in Pro Tools. And then I started shadowing the other engineer there. And we were doing like Home Depot commercials and oh. uh, Texas Lottery, like Pizza Hut and stuff like that. But that was in San Antonio. And then the CEO who had hired me, his name was Claudio, he was like, we have this state of the art studio in Dallas but there's nobody in Dallas to operate the studio. So we're just trying to basically get you up to par so that you can just move to Dallas and live there and you'll be the one well, there. How old were you at this point? 22. Wow. 22. It's a yeah. freaking big deal. That was 2016. So yeah. Um, that was, yeah, I was like, wow, I made it. Cool. <laughs> um, so that was the plan. I'll get trained up. Move to Dallas because we would do sessions at the studio in Dallas, but we'd have to drive from San Antonio yeah. four hours just to do the session and then either drive back. They had this apartment that they had here in, in Dallas that they paid rent for. So maybe spend the night at the apartment, come back the next day. But they're like, well, you can live in that apartment for free. Just be good enough to work the studio and you'll be the engineer in Dallas. So I was like, Whoa. all right, cool. Yeah, let's do it. Try me up. <laughs> so I don't know how long it took exactly, but some point in 2017, I moved to Dallas and was like the head engineer at this place. So only employee, I was pretty much by myself for 80% of the job because everybody lived in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. I was the only one out here, but we would do commercials mainly for Ford and Miller Lite and Texas Lottery. Those were the three big ones, but there was yeah. always other stuff happening there. Did you enjoy it? Were you learning a lot? I even though loved it. Wasn't it. it was super corporate and I really felt like I enjoyed it a lot. Um, you learned it was a lot of pressure learn. because that was kind of where I first got exposed to like having to work with big yeah. corporate heads behind you and they are very picky people. And yeah. so you have to be perfect. You have to be super quick when they ask you for something. You've got to like magically be able to do it. In well, like and it's five a big seconds. audience that's going to hear mm -hmm. your product yeah. because it's these huge corporations. Yeah. And so we have the creative directors who are in the room and they re, uh, report to the, the head at the agency, mm -hmm. but then they report to the guys at the actual company, Ford or wherever. So it's like every step has to be perfect. You don't, nobody wants the mistake to fall on their heads, you know, and it somehow it always come down to it's our fault, but that's why it has to be 
perfect. Mm -hmm. Everything you do very, very fast because you don't want them like waiting around in the room. They get anxious, tired. They just go to another studio. So it's just got to like, it all feels like magic. It all happens so fast and it sounds so good. Yeah. And so that was great training for a place like this to work with musicians. Um, Because I know musicians are, there, there's a lot of different personalities in the music world. Yeah, most people are pretty chill, and so when I get to deliver things this fast, it's like impressive, and people really respond to it well. But having that training in that world just it, it really helped. When you were doing that for those commercials, mm-hmm. was music involved, or was it mostly not just- super involved? There were times that me and Claudio uh, we would create music for a couple couple mm. commercials. I think we got an award for one of them. Ooh. But very few. We did maybe, like, I could probably count them on one hand, however many we created music for. Mm-hmm. The rest of it would be, they would tell us, like, we want a song that is kind of happy, but sort of serious, and it kind of makes you think of home, but also the beach. Wow. And so then I would go through these music libraries <sighs> and be like, this is this evokes that feeling. That's cool. And I would pick, like, ten, and then they would pick, like, five of those, and then we would pick, it would just kind of, like, you know. Narrow it down. Narrow it down. Were you so. doing music outside yeah. of work? I would make my own. I was still using yeah. Ableton, so oh, I would cool. just do stuff. And that was cool because I wasn't doing music at work, so I still had enough right. creativity to do it at home, doing my own stuff. So yeah. that that was nice. That's why I was wondering mm-hmm. if you started missing music or if you were like plugging it in for yourself in other ways. Yeah, and I had just moved to Dallas, huge city. I mean, coming from Santa Fe, because I only lived with my parents for like maybe four I think it was maybe six months. So Santa Fe, no nightlife, nothing to do past right. eight o'clock or maybe past six. And then coming to Dallas where there's something every single night, like that was also taking up some time, just seeing artists and seeing DJs and all this mm. stuff out here. I like that. Were you playing? Did you ever try to like play with people out? Never really got into that here. Yeah. Yeah. I would DJ a couple events, but I played, I think I've actually played one show in Dallas and it just happened to be at the House of Blues. And that was a cool story too, but we'll, we'll get, get there. there. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. So you're in Dallas, you're working with this more corporate audio engineering job. Mm-hmm. You Are you liking the city? Loving the city. Loving yeah. Dallas. Mm-hmm. Where in Dallas were, did you move to? Like what area was it? So that corporate apartment where I didn't have to pay rent was right in between Deep Ellum and the farmer's market. So oh, yeah. perfect Great area. Location. You get to walk to Deep Ellum, walk to the farmer's market. Awesome. I could basically walk to work too because that studio was in Uptown right next to Clyde Warren Park. Mm-hmm. So I just felt like, wow, I have made it. Like, I'm in the right Whoa. in the center of downtown, basically, like all these buildings. No and it's just super amazing. It, it was a studio designed by this guy named Russ Berger, who he designs pretty awesome studios. May so. Burger, Russ Burger. <laughs> <laughs> These burgers keep coming into yeah. your life, I man. I love burgers. Man, yeah. it's a sign. Did you know that my name is Haley Ryan Burger? No. No, it's not. Oh, <laughs> okay. God. No, I did not know that. <laughs> so, okay, keep, keep so going. So you made this it. Is, I, honestly, yeah. I'm loving every yeah. bit of this. I so love learning about you. This is where things start to a little bit go downhill i was i was yeah. wondering too because yeah. n- well no it's a little bit too good so far I know, so right? i need some shit to happen <laughs> yeah, in your life. yeah about to this is the part about of the movie the so let me see i think it was about 2018 so i've done this for two years now at this corporate thing really loved it um crushing it crushing it and then we decide <laughs> to move to downtown my, my boss found like another area like another building that had a little bit cheaper rent mm-hmm so we wanted to move the studio from uptown to downtown. And we started doing that. Like basically we found the place. We had to start basically like tear down the walls of the new building and like rebuild them so they would be soundproof. So that was some experience of like actually building a studio Ooh, in a high cool. rise, which was really, really fun and really cool. Um, and we tore down all the sound treatment and everything that was in the old place. Like, sorry, Russ Berger, but we destroyed that space. Like, took everything out it looked like a tornado would hit it and we took all of those things put it in the new space just about to be done building it but in this whole move you know we had no studio to work out of the old studio was destroyed the new studio wasn't quite done yet and we weren't able to keep doing jobs so i i never really knew how the finances were working at that space but i assume we lost a lot of bids because we didn't have a place to do the the commercial 
Mm-hmm. And so right before we're done building the new one, my boss is like, hey, we just can't afford you anymore. And really? I just moved to downtown. I just like signed a lease for a new apartment in downtown. Was oh, cool. expecting my salary. My salary. And then he was just like, yeah, sorry. Can't like starting right now. Like there's no more. Wow. <laughs> you can you can go home, basically. It was much nicer than that. Like he was he's a nice guy. I don't wanna Yeah. But yeah, it, but it was tough. Sucks. It was like, yeah, it was a big blow. And I'm like, what am I going to do? So your wide open spaces were very wide open. Yeah. You just got bitch slapped. <laughs> and burger. I have downtown rent to pay. So yeah, it was pretty tough. Cool. And so that's one of the best feelings when you made a think financial about? commitment and you don't yeah. have the finances. Yeah, <laughs> it was tough. So I oh, thought God. about What'd the color of my parachute. <gasps> oh, you started uh-huh. sending emails. Yeah, I started sending start emails. I would go. We had some competitors, so I would take those CEOs out to lunch, and I did actually get a few jobs doing that. I, there was this film company called. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'll remember it in a second, probably. But took him to lunch, and we were just talking. We we hit it off really well. So I did freelance with them. Did a commercial for Cadillac and Mary Kay with them. I've heard of them. Yeah, <laughs> pretty pretty cool stuff. So I was able to do that. There did they was a, give you a pink Cadillac? I did. It was about the pink Cadillacs. The commercial oh, was. So I got ooh. to see them on the screen. The pink Cadillacs. And then there was a, another audio studio called Pure Evil, and they. Hired me for a couple of freelance gigs there too. So I I still felt like I was in the audio world in Dallas. I was able yeah. to like keep my connections alive and people knew my name and I would get calls randomly to do stuff freelance. So like that felt really good. And to still have some money coming in because eventually that list of the emails, like when I first got let go, I started making a list of everybody I was going to email and invite to lunch. And you know, that list started dwindling down, getting mm. less and less. So I was thinking like where could I possibly work to make this list grow again? Like where can I meet more people yeah. and what's like an easy place that I can just hop into? So that was Guitar Center or Sam Ash. Those are my two like, obviously I'm applying to all the studios and everything, but like if I get a job there, I know people that own studios shop there for stuff. Yeah. And mm-hmm. musicians shop there. They probably need somebody to record their band. So it's like, that's where I'll be able to it's expand really my network. Move. You're yeah. creative. You got to be creative in this, in this industry. So I got the job at Guitar Center, and I Which went in one? Uh, the one in Central Dallas, hmm. yeah, the closer to downtown, because yeah. I was living downtown. And I decided I'd, that was another thing. When I got the when we were moving to downtown, I was like, I'm going to leave my car at my parents' house way in San Antonio. I don't need that because I'm going to walk to work every day. No. And so parking downtown is extremely expensive. So even after I got let go, I couldn't bring my car back. So it was nice to be at that Guitar Center because I could just hop on the Dart on the train. Oh, nice. Yeah. And get pretty much right to Guitar Center, so it was like totally pedestrian living in Dallas with no car. That was interesting. I was about mm. to say that's uh, yeah, that's almost impossible if you go anywhere outside of your neighborhood yeah. in Dallas. This was in the time where there was a scooters though, so I could at least scooter around and oh yeah, yeah. It's when I was meeting the scooter, yeah. too many people broke bones on them. Yeah. Oh. So that's Guitar awful. Center, I went in with the mentality: it's like I don't want this job. This is not the job I want. I don't like being a salesperson, but this is how I'm going to treat it. Every time I sell something, doesn't matter if it's for somebody's living room or whatever, I'm going to invite that. Like, I'm going to offer my services outside of Guitar Center to this person, freelance. Yeah. So if I sold them a speaker, I'll be like, if you need help putting this in your room, like even simple stuff like that, if you just want help like setting these up so that they sound the best in your room, here's my number. And I would do that for every single thing I sold there, no matter what it was, whether it was software, like I can show you how to use it, invite me to your house and yeah, I'll, I'll that. do that. And I met some really cool people doing that too. I met the CEO of Witch Witch, the sandwich company. Whoa. And I was able to, through him, do some recordings at the Witch Witch headquarters in downtown and did this recording of this guy named Zach Heckendorf, who was represented by John Mayer's talent agent. So oh I met goodness. that guy. It was like, that was a cool explosion. There was this metal band I was super into in high school named Ender Shikari. They shopped at Guitar Center before one of their shows. And I was like, are, are you guys Ender Shikari? I saw this guy had a, the name Shikari on his shirt. And I didn't recognize their faces because, I I mean, it's been since high school. But I saw Shikari. I was like, do you do you know Ender Shikari? Like, why are you wearing that shirt? He's like, oh, yeah, that's us. We just flew in from England and we need some speakers. Oh, my God. Yeah, we need some speakers to do like a little rough mix in our van. 
like, okay, yeah, yeah. I got these used speakers. so metal. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're like worldwide. They're like, they're huge. Like very, very big. That's cool. Awesome band. It's like, wow. Okay, cool. I got this studio that I was freelancing out of at the time. There was just somebody who I had met and let me, they let me use their space if I had sessions and they welcomed any work I could bring them. It's like, I have this space, super inexpensive. I'd love to record you if you need it. Like if you're doing your rough mix and you need some vocals, let's record them there. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll hit you up. And they did. What? So I was like from Guitar Center, I got to record one of my favorite bands from when I was in high school. And they gave me like backstage passes for the show that they were doing. Oh and it was gosh. really cool. So That's Guitar awesome. Center definitely exposed me. Like it, The yeah. plan was working really slowly, but it, it was working. I was there for about two years. And like there were some low points in those two years. I'm just like. Of I'm course. St- I'm stuck. This is what or I'm you doing. you can't see. Yeah, you can't mm-hmm. see forward, can't see right. too far ahead. Yeah. But then I was in San I Like I had made that kind of known that that's what I did at Guitar Center. So all the employees there, the way they were able to like sell extra things, because if that person needed somebody to train them, they could just give them my card and be like, yeah, I, if you need, if you don't know how to use this, I'll still sell it to you. And then we can have Will teach you how to use it. And that would help other people sell things. So yeah. then this guy named Patrick Crane goes into Guitar Center at Mr. one point. Mr. Pink Pants. Mr. Pink Cakes. Pants. And I'm out of town. I'm at my sister's birthday. So this is March 14th, 2020. Whoa. I, I know it was her birthday and I was at- That's right when the world the shut, shut down, down almost. I know. Like the day of, more or less. Yes, exactly. So I'm out in San Antonio and I get this call. And he's like, hey, I just bought this Apollo and I need- They, they told me at Guitar Center you can help me hook it up. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Let's meet up next week, Tuesday or whatever day it was. So I come out here and that was just like, he is the nicest guy. We got along immediately. We ended up staying here until like three or four in the morning, just having yeah. fun, hooking stuff up and jamming out. And immediately Patrick. we were like. Angel. Yeah. Immediately good friendship, good relationship. And from that point, it just started like buying more gear, setting this place up as a recording studio. Well, but and you have to preface this is when the world shut down. So he That's you and true. he you yeah. and he. You and he. He and I. You guys were meeting when everything was really not nothing was happening in the world. Like, right. Well, we met right before then, you know, so we but met then up y'all and started meeting up to set this up even when the world was shut down. Yeah, I actually went to my parents' house when it was quarantine quarantine, but I remember having this place in my head and it was still empty there was nothing even in here but it was just like and no name wow this is we had the name was there so okay. we had kind of the name um i don't know if it was official if we were calling it friendware at that point i think i still have patrick in my in my phone as like patrick and then badass fern or badass oak cliff jam room i think i have it he's in my <laughs> phone as patrick fernware yeah yeah <laughs> me too well, badass oak cliff jam room is what i have him under that's a lot of words <laughs> yeah. you should call him patrick badass jam room burger <laughs> the burgers keep coming back burgers. Man. um so i'm at i'm at my house in spring branch just thinking about this place and all the connections i had made through fernware or through guitar center I was just like telling them all, hey, I have a place to record now in Oak Cliff. If we want to do anything once we can get back out into the world, let's do this. And just thinking about this place constantly. And then when I do get back out of quarantine, I start working again at Guitar Center. And we just keep building this place up. And there's not a whole lot happening in the world. Nobody's really wanted to come outside yet. It was pretty yeah. early on still. Like yeah. maybe after three or four weeks, I left my parents' house and yeah, came back. Yeah, because people so. forget sometimes. Like I remind myself at the beginning – we were doing nothing, Zero, nothing. nothing, like not out of my house right. at all. Yeah. So I did quarantine Months. for a good probably four weeks. And then I came back and I was able to work again at Guitar Center, mask on the whole time kind of stuff. And during that time, me and Patrick still would hang out and set up this place. No stress or anything because we're not doing sessions. We're just getting this place. Yeah. And I don't even know what the vision was. I mean, that was just like. We just wanted it to be a really cool jam room, or Patrick did, and I wanted to help him. So it was yeah, really yeah. fun to kind of Very simple and build pure. it together. And then at one point, he called me. He's like, hey, I got sput. And I'm like, oh, man. I, don't, I don't know who that is. So I started looking up. I'm like, oh, that's sput. Like, oh, I used to listen to Snarky Puppy when I was in high school. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, like, oh, my yeah. gosh. Like, I, Oof, I'm so excited. That's a big freaking deal. Patrick was out of town. He's like, sput wants to come up and see the studio. So I met him here and showed him. And we also got along immediately. Sput's a super nice guy. Oh, um, so lovable. Yeah, incredibly. 
and yeah, he, he liked me. Patrick was, I don't remember how long he was out of town, but we ended up doing like a mini jam night type thing here with Sput and this bass player called Mono Neon. Yeah, and that's who we saw that night. The first night we came, it was yeah. Sput, yeah. Mono Neon, and Damien. Yes. On the keys. keys. Xavier Taplin? Yes. Yes. I think, yeah. Xavier. Dominique. Right. Dominique. Yeah, Dominique. But he, yeah, he goes by Xavier. Xavier. Yeah, he they that was a really spectacular night. Spectacular. Yeah. So the <laughs> them three were here okay. and uh it was kind of like a huge party that was happening and I was still not super comfortable with the space because the way we had it set up was not like this. I mean, like our Apollos, like the the stuff that we plug our instruments into were in that room and mm-hmm. I was working out of this room. And so if I had to adjust something, I'd have to run over there and like yeah. there was it was just like you were learning. It was now. chaotic. I was learning, but I had these like world class, amazing musicians that yeah. I'm responsible for recording. You're like pretend they're Mary Kay. Pretend they're Mary Kay. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's uh, such a weird. And <laughs> for them, but yeah. But uh, I remember the first half of that party. I didn't record Mono Neon. Like his mic, his Oops, he just, it wasn't, just it. wasn't it wasn't hooked up. Yeah, it's cool. So I was sweating <laughs> like bullets. Best bases ever. <laughs> Yeah, I was sweating bullets. I was so, so anxious because, I mean, like, I'm used to, like, having the corporate heads over me and, like, yeah. that kind of stuff where it's, like, That's you make a I mistake. by Mary Kay. Yeah, if you make a mistake, like, you get just, I don't know. It's not It's not good. Yeah. So I was making a huge mistake here, especially I knew Patrick was going to come back and be, like, well, what I just expected, hell? like, the worst, you know. So I was just so anxious, sweating, sweating, sweating. I probably looked, like, terrified throughout the whole Deer in event. the headlights. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, however it went, Sput still liked me. And so then Aww. we ended up doing another session. And this time it was just like a straight up, just a session of, of Mono, Xavier, and Sput. And it was just us three. And I was making crazy mistakes that night too. And that wasn't even in the pressure of having a party. But still, I guess like they just liked my attitude and Aww. what was happening. And so, You were just getting your footing. Yeah. Because you'd been out of the game for a bit. Out of the game for a while and not in music, never in right. music. And the, right. it's yeah. a different, um, you know, it's a different dynamic yeah, doing a is. music studio as opposed to just corporate like voiceover. Because that yeah. in that studio, I have one person on a mic and then we record, I put it over music. I then kind of put it in the video and send it off. This is yeah. like you have a bunch of mics. You have to be looking at a lot of things at the same yeah, time. Yeah, to get and, the right sounds oof. you're looking for. Yeah. And plus the energy that's happening at mm-hmm. the time and it's live and yeah. intoxicating. Yes. <laughs> so even though I made a bunch of mistakes that night too, Sput still liked me. Patrick still liked me and just kept growing and I was getting better and learning immensely and yeah, but you weren't been, technically working here. I was still yet. working at Guitar Center. Yeah. yeah, I was. So I was part time at Guitar Center. I never wanted to go full time there because I definitely wanted time and I wanted the flexibility to do freelance. So yeah. I never took a full time position there, even though they offered it to me. That's also something that we ha- talk about a lot: is yeah. when you fill up your whole everything with one thing, mm-hmm. then it just closes you off to any other room for growth. Like, and I think that that is actually, it's an admirable, admirable thing that people try to do. We all do it. Mm-hmm. You get this full-time job because you're trying to take care of yourself and be yep. responsible. But then yeah. that, if it's not your thing, well, then you're so drained after you do this full-time job that you have no space or time or energy for yep. anything else to happen. So again, wise thank you so you come full-time here we meet you mm-hmm. you are become one of our favorite people and now we're going off to nasa how yeah. did that happen yeah that's crazy right i don't even know honestly i mean like it, your shirt says <laughs> music brought me here it did music i mean me here it's that that's not the full theme of the yeah. show i'm hearing that preacher mm-hmm. man absolutely me too. Prophecy. So scary. I mean, I was working at Guitar Center and here for a while. And then at a certain point, once Sput became more involved, I was just like, I have so much faith in this place and in God. And like, I know it's going to work out. So yeah. I quit Guitar Center and yes. no job offer or anything from Patrick. I just, I was still free. I had enough connections. I had made a Guitar Center, like yeah. people that would hire me weekly to, to, either give their sons lessons or to 
hook up their sound equipment. Like I had a, enough going there and we were doing a lot of sessions here and I had like my freelance rate with Patrick. So I was, I was comfortable. Um, so I was able to quit that. And then maybe it was maybe three or four months of just no full-time real job, pure freelance. And then we did a really cool session here. And Patrick was like, you know, do you, do you want a full-time job? And I was just like, yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> that probably was seven months ago, mm. eight months ago, nine, probably eight. Let's say between seven and nine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Good estimate. Um, and so then I guess in January, I don't know. I had learned a lot in this freelance time, you know, resting when you feel comfortable somewhere and you take a rest, I would always get the rug pulled out of under me. And there's, a, mm. I mean, there's a lot of stories that we skipped over and glossed over, but there was some yeah. pretty bad experiences that I'd had. And so I've never, I've learned to not rest, even though I'm in a good situation and the place is amazing and I couldn't ask for anything else. I still am always kind of defensive and making sure I know what else mm. is out there just to make sure in case something unexpected happens and mm. things unexpected happen all the time in case it's nice to see what the market's like. And so I was just taking a look in January and I saw this company called AMA. They'd put a job, um, What's it called? Like just a listing. listing. Yeah, a job listing for an audio engineer. And pretty much everything that they required, I had had multiple years of experience doing. Like broadcast and live sound and signal flow, audio, everything audio related. I was like, I know exact every single one of those terms I know a lot about. So yeah, I'll apply. And also <laughs> in the in the application, it said that you'll be working with astronauts and in NASA vehicles. Whoa. So I was like, that's cool. really cool. <laughs> really, really cool. So I put the application out and then a month later in February, they sent me an email and they said, this job is on hold. So I was like, that's probably the nice way of saying like we found somebody else and yeah. don't, don't, yeah. don't worry about it. So I totally forgot about it. And then I think April is when they called me to set up an interview and I was interviewing with the person who's going to be my supervisor and um, another lady and they were super friendly and they, we were just having conversations and I'm, I've always been kind of a nerd about space. I love learning about things like all these new telescopes that we have <laughs> in space right now. Like I'm, I really am attracted to that. I always wanted to learn and just um, know as much about space as possible. So we just started talking about that for some of the interview, just like not even about the job, just about space and how we all kind of love science and stuff like that. Nerded out a little yeah. bit. <laughs> so it was a really comfortable interview and then they would ask me some questions about signal flow and as soon as they would be finishing the sentence I would already be answering the question so mm -hmm. it was like I knew everything that they needed pretty much there was like one question where I was kind of stumbling on just terminology but I understood the the theory behind it so it went very well and then I didn't hear it back at all <laughs> for five weeks it was Jeez. just sitting and I'm just no idea what's happening and then the the lady who I was in touch with, she's a like she works for human resources, I think. She was like, Hey, we need you to clarify something on your resume. So I clarify that. And she's like, Okay, now we need you to do this. And they start asking me more questions. And I'm just like, Okay, this is a good sign, I think, because that means they're still looking at me. Mm -hmm. So I gave her everything that she needed. And then she was like, Okay, well, we're gonna talk to the references you provided. So we'll be in touch sometime next week. Tuesday. I start reaching out to the references and I'm like, hey, have you guys been contacted? And and with this one guy, Chris Godby, he was like, oh, you're going to get the job. Like, she's yes. oh, really cool. We talked about this and that. Like, you're going to get it. My other reference, uh, Alberto, who used to work for Pandora, and like, he was an awesome person to be able to put as a reference. He was also super excited for me and he was confident that I was going to get it. So that started giving me a little bit like of relief. But at the same time, I haven't heard anything back. So I'm still like, okay, I don't want to count on that but that's good yeah and then i get the offer letter and i'm just like was it a bittersweet moment <sighs> to with this situation at fernware and this great opportunity with not Nancy? even with just this i mean yes this at fernware but all of these six yeah. years i've built relationships in dallas yeah, i've learned yeah. the city inside and out i have all my favorite spots and where to get food like i know exactly what i need to know to be happy in dallas mm. and yeah. now i've got to start from scratch and yeah. you did Houston. it to yourself 
I know. But you did it's it to it. us too. That's right. Yeah, I did it to y'all. <laughs> so that's like a weird like balance of like being comfortable and finding your spots in your niche and then like pushing yourself out mm-hmm. of your comfort zone to grow. And I think that throughout this whole journey, you've just told us you've that's something you've kind of tried to do. And that's something yeah. that I think if I were you, I wouldn't have been applying for jobs. Not just the truth. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't applying. So, you know, when I was living downtown with no real job, I was applying to everything that I saw. And like, there was no discerning, even if it was just some like AV, like setting up uh, sound for this corporate building and just like yeah. installing speakers, which is not what I wanted to do either. I was you like, I could do that. Anything. I would have yeah. done that. I was applying to everything. Yeah. So working here, I was very selective. If I was going to put an application out, it's like, this has to be a Perfect. big yes. step up, not even just like a little step up because yeah. I love it here so yeah, much. It has yeah. to be this huge step up. So NASA yeah. audio engineer, you can't get much that's bigger. a pretty big step. Yeah. And I was that's like, really let's big. do that. It's major. Yeah. And the fact that the job interview is so Easy. Easy. I literally have one Skype call with somebody and they were like, I didn't really know what the job was when I applied. And in the interview, they were like, yeah, so we're going to have you um, operating these ground to space systems where you're connecting astronauts to space stations. And if, if there's an interview somewhere around the world, you know, this is going to be something that we we look at, like where they are in space compared to what where that places on earth and we have to time it so that you can like no i mean i i know i'm probably butchering it because i don't know what the job entails yeah, but, but it's you're something, about to learn some yeah, really cool it's stuff something like that connecting astronauts to earth and you have to like look at weather patterns so that you're not going to have interference with the wireless connectivity to well, space that's and wild it's going to be really cool we're really happy for you. Thank you we are and we're happy that you're not moving too too far yeah. so that we can still see you sometime 100 and that's what I, I talked to patrick about i was like I don't want to, I still want to be involved here. I love this place. We built it up together from yeah. nothing. So I'll still be freelancing here. And yeah. whenever we can set up sessions uh, yeah. in advance, like with either you guys or with musicians or whatever, um, I'll definitely be able to drive back up. Because also in the interview, I had a, like coded questions. And it's like, how does flexible, how flexible are you guys with scheduling? And what are the, mm. what are the, um, the, what's it called? Hours. Yeah. Like what are the hours? Are the, the shifts like you know because yeah. i'm sure they were saying that sometimes we need engineers in there 24 7 to be to make sure oh, like wow, this connection yeah. doesn't ever break so you have to right. take shifts around the clock and so there's a big team of audio engineers so they were like yeah as long as you get somebody to cover your shifts we really don't care like we're flexible you can do what oh, you need to do that's awesome and so i have pto coupled with that so i should be able to plan pretty easily to be able to come to dallas to do a couple days of sessions here and so i anticipate many drives back and forth we do too Mm -hmm. (laughs) well thank you for sharing your story with us i i personally really enjoyed like getting to know more about you and your journey to us and beyond to infinity (laughs) and beyond and and the (laughs) the truth is that we don't know what's gonna come for you next brother right so it's exciting, it's exciting yeah. yeah. And we all have a little to learn from you about staying present and open and, yeah. you know, open, just being... Keep your options open, yeah. yeah. And take some people to lunch. No joke. <laughs> Get that book and read pages Page one through three. One through three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what color is your parachute edition? It was the internet edition of 2016. Okay, so that's wow. one through three. Mm-hmm. Got it. Page one through three. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Will. You're welcome. So I should slide out now? Slide on okay. out. <laughs> wow, what a great conversation we had with Will Flato. Well, well, Will was quite a wonder. Yes, the amount of burgers in his life is incredible. Boy, no, knew? but I really enjoy learning more about him because he is a person that we really like and connect to, but we've had, we, we wanted to know more in depth about his past and how Maybe. he got here. We should ask him to lunch. Oh my gosh. We should buy his lunch. Let's buy, let's get some burgers and <laughs> see if what else he can tell us. No, but the, I'm really excited for him and his new job. I will miss him, but hopefully he can come and help. And it, Yeah, and it's really inspiring how he just tries to stay present and that you don't have to plan out your whole entire future. I will say I'm a person who does try to do that and it's ugly. <laughs> it's 
it's not. It is because you – he's right. Like if you hyper-focus on something, you could really miss these doors like, you know, NASA. Yeah, because I don't think he would have ever had NASA even on his radar for what he would be doing as a musician slash audio engineer. But here he is. The world gave it to him. Yeah, so I think the lesson and takeaway is stay open – all your options are still options. And connect to the people that are around you. Just like meet people and be yourself. And who knows what's going to come from the people that you meet. I think that's really good. And I also think so many people underestimate the importance of like mentorship and reaching mm-hmm. out to the people who are where you want to be because we think, uh, that we don't want to bother them or that wouldn't really help me or like I can figure it out. And it's so important to reach out to those people because they – they are where they are for a reason. And if you're the – like we, people say, like if you're the smartest person you hang out with or you're you're the best, then you're you the have nowhere room. to grow. Yeah. So I think it's really important to stay open. And the value of personal connection in the midst of this like tech social media world LinkedIn. that we live in. Yes. Like taking someone to lunch sounds a little old school, but so nice to have – you know, share energy in person with people, look them in the eyes, have a nice conversation for no reason, really, just for connection. Yeah. Well, loved you're it. Smart. You're smart. Thank you guys for listening. And again, we are Haley and Amanda with the Dear Friend Podcast. We love coming into your headphones or car radios or wherever you listen to <laughs> us. And we are filming and recording here at Fernware Studio. Usually Will Flato is the audio engineer and today we have an extra set of hands. Oh, Mr. Tresco. Mr. Tresco. And we're really excited to get to know him too. And don't forget that you can watch our interviews and our episodes on YouTube if you go subscribe to us at Dear Friend Comma Podcast on YouTube. And if you like the music in the beginning and the outro, it's our band, Sister the Band. So you can go to sistertheband.com if you want to learn more about our band. Thanks for tuning in. Don't Y'all forget, live party. <laughs>